I am 43 years old and I live in Fairfield, Iowa. I love to sing, I love to read, and I love to walk. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I could do a big long, but I won't. <laughs> and I'm a first grade teacher and I've been teaching since 1999. I have two children and a stepdaughter. It was 2005 and I was just going in for my exam after I had uh, my second child. So I was just going in with my familiar gynecologist. He said, made some funny sounds and I, I knew something wasn't quite right. He went to go get his partner and he said, don't worry, Shauna, it's not cancer, but I want to figure out what it is. And so then that was on a Thursday and on a Friday, they called me and said, you need to come in to the doctor's office. They want to talk to you. So I knew at that point, my heart was just beating out of my chest. And so I went there and they sat me down and said, you have cervical cancer. When I first started treatment, when I walked into the University of Iowa and I went into the actual area where everybody, you know, they're missing their hair, they're wearing scarves and things. I just, I remember I went in the bathroom and cried and I, I kept saying, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be sick. I received the phone call from the gynecologist that I had cancer um, in the middle of the afternoon when I was at work. I didn't want to bug my parents, but the first people I wanted to like tell was my mom because she has a nursing background and I wanted her to like tell me that uh, no it's gonna be fine you know and reassure me so um but I didn't want to bug them during work so I just I hung up the phone and I went outside and just kind of walked around the building for a few minutes just to you know gather my thoughts and think about like what this person just told me on the phone so I finished the work day and then I drove over to my parents house and um talked to my mom and my mom was great. She was just like, she would, didn't act shocked or anything. She just was like, okay, well, let's, just, let's go to this appointment tomorrow. Let's see what he says. And then we'll go from there. And until then, you know, don't worry about it. Cause we don't know. And so in a matter of four days, I had three exams from three different doctors and ultimately then was told that, yes, I have cancer. And it was just kind of this whirlwind of, wait, what? I was just trying to renew my prescription and now I'm gonna be going down this path? Nearly every case of cervical cancer is caused by HPV. I don't think everybody completely understands the virus. They don't necessarily understand how common it is. It also causes various other kinds of cancer, uh, head and neck cancers in males and females. It causes anal cancers is one, penile cancers is, is another. In fact, out of all the cancers that are caused by HPV, a good third of them are in males. When I first found out it was penile cancer, <sighs> We did an amp half an amputation. Three weeks later, they dissected the lymph nodes from my groin. About a year after that, we found out that the cancer had returned to my penis. I had a full amputation. It's been a rough road for about five years now. Uh, I'm marked up and cut up and tattooed and between surgeries and radiation and been pretty well devastated by this. When I got the diagnosis from, from the doc, initially the ENT, um, he shared with us at that point, um, I had uh, throat cancer, uh, and that was the first time I'd heard uh, HPV-16 uh, derived throat cancer. We didn't want my son Matthew to hear about it uh, second or third hand, so we sat down with him uh, one evening and shared the news with him that, that I had throat cancer and I was, I was likely gonna survive, the odds were in my favor, um, but that was a, a difficult discussion. And then that night or shortly thereafter, he started asking the difficult questions, you know, things like, you know, are you gonna live? You know, what are your chances? Do you think you're gonna die? It was alarming, it was, it was fearful. And, and once again, at that point in time, you know, I was clueless about, you know, how brutal the treatment was actually gonna be. The lowest point for me in this was when my doctors told me I had a venereal wart. I came home and I told my girlfriend that I loved very much. I got blamed for doing things I didn't do. I haven't seen her since, and I hear from her children. She passed away about a year and a half ago from cervical cancer. She turned her back on me because she thought I'd done something I didn't. So that was probably the lowest point for me, and then when I found out that she had passed away. HPV affects men, and it affects them pretty hard. The same is true about all the HPV-associated cancers. They're, they can be devastating. 
One of the other side effects of radiation of the of the neck and throat is something they call uh, mucositis. You just generate all kinds of phlegm and crud in your throat that you have to spit out all the time. A couple of the doctors in the hospital said I had one of the worst cases of um, mucositis they'd ever seen. Pretty much lost the ability to speak for the most part. When he couldn't talk, uh, that was really tough because I couldn't have like conversations with him about anything. So we'd just be sitting out here watching something and I'd say something and I'd be like, oh wait, he can't say anything back. That hurt me seeing him in a lot of pain. He couldn't sleep. We would sleep in about three to five minute increments because the buildup of the mucus was very thick and he couldn't keep it clear. So he would doze for a couple of two, three minutes, four minutes, and then he would kind of start to choke and cough. He was like a caged animal. When we went to radiation, I was tears rolling down my face. You have to help us. The radiation felt like every time I went to the bathroom, I felt like someone took a knife and stuck it up my behind. You know, it was so painful to go to the bathroom. That went on for a while, the side effects from the radiation, and I still deal with that every day. I mean, every day. The adjustment to life after cancer has been the hardest. My bladder leaks a lot, and I will have the urge to go to the bathroom a lot, and when I don't really need to. Radiation damaged several areas of my intestines, and because of that, these areas don't really function well. Because it's very hard to gain weight, and it's very hard to absorb nutrients, and I've got to still maintain that somehow. Eating is a big part of your life, and when you have to focus so much on it just to survive every day, it's really difficult, and it becomes like a full-time job, and people don't always understand that. I've talked to cervical cancer survivors and, and heard so many tragic stories about the impact that it had on their lives. It affects their relationships. It affects their feelings of self-worth. It affects their uh, ability and their, their dreams. My son was nine months old and I remember thinking, I'm gonna have, I'm a teacher, I'll have at least another month or two of summer to, to spend with him and enjoy him before he's a year old. And then I got sick and I swear like that whole, whole like next couple years I don't remember. Sometimes I feel like it robbed me of time with my family when I could be 100%. I don't care how old you are, for every man, losing their sexuality is pretty devastating. I live alone. I'm totally alone. Uh, got a world of friends, don't get me wrong. But as far as having anybody in my life to somebody to love, I, I don't have that. There would be no way that you would want anybody that you knew or loved to have to go through that. I think it's truly miraculous that we have a vaccine that can prevent cancer and prevent it so well. The vaccine is one of the easiest ways to prevent cancer that exists. And so I think that when you think about it this way, there's not a lot of good reason to refuse it. Everybody knows how devastating cancer is. Everybody knows somebody who's had cancer. I want parents to know that this is not a vaccine for just HPV. It's, an, it's a vaccine to prevent cancer and not just one type of cancer, but multiple types of cancer. So it's just a no-brainer. I never want another parent to have to see their child go through this as an adult. I watch my husband go through it. My message to anybody out there would be, get the vaccine. Number one, I think doctors have to really push this vaccine. The main thing I would like to see is the whole country get vaccinated. This, it needs to be an immunization process just like when we were children. What parent wouldn't want to vaccinate their child? It means you're protecting them from cancer. I think it's, it's a, amazing. And I, I've vaccinated both my children. The vaccine is really extremely safe. In fact, it's been uh, so well tested, it's probably one of the best well tested vaccines. And study after study after study on this vaccine continues to show no significant safety concerns. I don't want any male man to ever have to go through what I have gone through. Get everybody in the world vaccinated. It's preventable. My job is to make sure that kids have the healthiest features that they can. And this vaccine uh, will save so many lives. It's absolutely important that we recommend this vaccine.